Hi, this is Dan Letha for Reasons for Hope. Welcome to Draw It and Know It. On today's Art Lesson Edition, we are going to do a step-by-step -step how to draw a kangaroo. So let's get going. And we're going to start out with a pencil today. We're going to move over to a marker, and then we're going to do some coloring. And the colors that we have today are brown, uh, green, and blue. So have those ready to go. All right, for our first step, we're going to draw a skeleton or a kind of a sketch of a basic uh, construction, simple shapes uh, to help us draw the kangaroo. So we're gonna draw with our pencil line and we're gonna draw a big oval in the middle of the page and then we're gonna draw a smaller, thinner oval over there. And then we're gonna draw in the front, kind of attached to that oval is another circle, then a line for the tail. And so we're constructing the, the hip area right now where the, the the rear leg is going to attach to the kangaroo. We're going to draw a line that goes down and bends around. And that's going to be the, the hind leg, the big, strong hind leg of the kangaroo. We're going to draw another circle right there for the, the front leg, or kind of the arm-looking leg. And then a, a line for that, kind of give us a basic outline of what that leg looks like. And then a, a neck line. And then we're going to start drawing some outline a little bit. So the back of the neck and the front of the neck and the, and the, the chest and the belly. And then uh, once we've got that done, we're going to switch over to our pen. So we're going to start drawing some ink lines now. So the ears are big and floppy on the kangaroo, but uh, they stand up real nice. And that kangaroo can listen around with those things. And so we're going to draw some detail on the inside. Now the forehead and the, the front of the snout or the muzzle, I guess, on a kangaroo. And then we're going to draw the jawline and then the uh, back of the neck swoops down like that. We're going to follow our, our, our pencil line pretty, pretty straight there. And then we're going to draw the chest line, the front, uh, the front of the neck. And then we're going to move over to the back. Now there's more hump in the back than I drew with the pencil line. So we're going to kind of adjust that a little bit. And then for the uh, shoulder, the upper arm of the, the front leg of the kangaroo. And then we're going to draw the rest of it, the elbow. And then the, it goes down to a, like a tiny skinny wrist right there. And so then the, uh, the, the kind of the hand claw area of the kangaroo. Draw three claws there. At least that's what we're going to show. And they, they have kind of a long skinny wrist on the kangaroos. So then the belly uh, line, we're going to stop because we have to draw the, the rear leg. And again, we're gonna go up and reference that, uh, that big circle for where the, the leg attaches and draw down. And then we start thick and then go thinner as the leg goes down. And then this is the foot area of the kangaroo. Now the, the kangaroos belong to a group of animals called the macropods. And so that means large foot. So they have a really large foot, big legs, large feet. And then the tail is also big and large, and that's very, very useful for the kangaroo for a number of things. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but they have a very big tail. And uh, now we're going to draw the other things, the, the second thing. So it's got another leg, and uh, so we're just going to draw that in back there, and then a little difference there. <laughs> and then uh, draw in uh, a shadow, so that helps put in the the distance between the front and the back leg puts the back leg in the back and then the the other ear and then the other uh, the other forearm as it comes out from behind the kangaroo and we're going to put another shadow there too all right so we've got the um, the other parts the 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 parts that have a companion to them kind of drawn in and we're going to draw the eye so we draw sort of a sideway v that has um, a connector to it and uh, put a little more detail in there. The nose goes right about there. And then our kangaroo is kind of a happy fellow. So he's he's uh, looking at us. And he's got a little bit of a smile. And um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to make my pencil lines go away. I can do that on the computer. And as I outline this fellow, which he is a fellow, he's a male kangaroo. And in Australia, they call them boomers. Um, this is a red kangaroo. Now there's four different species, main species of kangaroo. And uh, this one is the largest, the red kangaroo. And so they have kind of a reddish brown look to them. And um, the, uh, the, the big ones, these big red kangaroos can, 
can reach a length of about six feet long from head to tail. So they're pretty big. And as far as animals go in the animal kingdom, kangaroos, I believe, are the largest hoppers. Um, in fact, they have a, a distinction about them because they're the only large animal that its main uh, way of locomoting or, or moving around is hopping. And uh, so that's a very unique feature about the kangaroo. God made them with these large spring-like legs to move around and spring around. And you watch them, they just bounce around. They don't run at all like other animals. Uh, they just hop. And uh, that tail is very, very useful for that because if they tried to hop around without that tail, they'd, they'd fall over onto their nose because they need something to balance out. And so that tail is, is given to them as a balance. Now, now not only does it help them balance when they move really fast. In fact, a kangaroo, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, can go up to uh, uh, 35 miles an hour. Um, but when they're moving slow, when they're not doing much at all, eating very slow or moving around, that, uh, that tail is also used as a, a fifth leg. And so you'll watch them use it and kind of lean on it and stand on it sort of a thing, sit on it. Uh, in fact, when they're fighting, sometimes the males fight and they use that leg as a, as like a, a seat or a, another, um, a fifth leg and they lean back on it and they kick with both legs at the same time. That's kind of fun to watch. Okay. Now we're doing in the fur. So I've, I'm, I'm drawing a little darker with the brown color that I have kind of following the shape of the kangaroo and giving it a sense of dimension where the shadow parts of it would be. So the, the light source is up on the upper right. And so I'm kind of keeping that in mind as I draw in some of the, the fur detail. And um, so the, the kangaroo is known as a jumper or a hopper. Can you think of other animals that are, are jumpers or hoppers? There's um, hares that we that, like rabbits. Uh, there's antelopes that jump around. There's kangaroo rats, which I named after the kangaroo. Um, so those are some animals, some frogs and toads. And then grasshoppers. There's even a, an insect called a frog hopper. And then there's spiders and fleas. But again, kangaroos are the only animals that are very large, that, uh, that their main way of jumping around or moving around is jumping. And uh, so jumping is, again, that main quality that we think of with kangaroos. Now, how high can a kangaroo jump? How high do you think? Can it go way, way high? And in our picture here, we're we're actually drawing it. It looks like it's way up in the clouds. Can, it, can a kangaroo jump that high? Well, actually, no. <laughs> the kangaroo, uh, some of the big ones, can jump about six feet high, which seems like, well, that's not that high. But um, their, main, their main strength is jumping far because, like I said, a kangaroo can jump and go about 35 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. And... Um, and so when it does that, it can have bounds. A single bound can be about 25 feet. And so, you know, those are our large jumps. And so 25 feet and 25 feet and 25 feet, those three jumps that it moves far and fast with those legs that God's given it. Now, here's a question. Were kangaroos on Noah's Ark? Well, I believe they were. Does the Bible mention kangaroos at all? It doesn't. The kangaroo is not found in the Bible. So how do we know that, that kangaroos were on Noah's Ark? Well, there's lots of animals that we have in the world today that aren't mentioned specifically in the Bible. But God is the creator and we know that he made kangaroos and all those other animals too. And so we know that, that they, were, they were part of God's creation. They didn't evolve or they didn't just happen or nobody else made them. And so um, they're, they're for sure part of God's creation. And God, for whatever the reason, chose not to mention them by name in the Bible, like lots of other animals. But here's the other question. How did they get to Australia if they were on Noah's Ark? And I believe they were on Noah's Ark, just like a lot of other animals that we don't have specifically named in the Bible. Um, and so sometimes people throw that question at Christians. You know, the Bible can't be true because how did the kangaroos get to, to Australia from, from Mount Ararat where the, the Ark landed? And um, so there's lots of different ways to explain that. Um, there's lots of different animals that have made their way around the world. And uh, sometimes people brought those animals with them as they traveled by, by boat and they spread out on the earth. And so that's, that's a possible explanation as to how kangaroos got to uh, 
Australia. And also, here's something to think about too, just because the world looks the way that it does today doesn't mean that that's the way it was in the past all the time. And so some of those island nations and island countries and just islands that we have spread out all over the place um, might not have been quite so islandy <laughs> as they are now. Some of those areas might have been more, uh, more visible and connected in the past. And then they've gone more underwater as time goes on, has gone on. So um, I think some of those areas were able to be uh, traversed by animals easier in the past and then the waters kind of secluded off those islands and so so there's lots of different ways we can think about how the kangaroo got from Mount Ararat to Australia and other animals have done the same thing around the world so that's not really a problem like people like to make it so next week let's see this is a male kangaroo again a boomer and next week we're gonna draw a female kangaroo and a little joey a little baby kangaroo and so the, the the female kangaroo has a pouch again another famous feature of the kangaroo so join us next week for how to draw a kangaroo 